Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm very grateful to God. Every week I have something interesting and important to share. And this time is plain wrong. Plain wrong. That means what? You understand, you can do it. But you decide not to do it. Understand my English? Also. That means you understand. You can follow, do what it says. But you refuse to do. Plain wrong. <coughs> In Chinese it is display, display, show you, right in front of your face. And you are able to follow, but you refuse to do so. Sincerely wrong is curable. Lots of people committed sincere wrong. Especially Apostle Paul, when he was S-A-U-L. When his name was S-A-U-L. He was a very, very devoted Moses follower, Old Testament practice. He was a dedicated, very, very dedicated, especially Ten Commandments, number one to number four. Only God, any human, can worship. Anybody else dare to worship anything else, deserve to be killed, death, physically. That was what he, his devotion. He devoted him his life to see that happen. Sincere wrong. Plain wrong is beyond cure. They say we believe what Bible says. But they go to church with men, not in Bible. Plain wrong. <clears throat> Forty some years ago, when I just arrived in New York City, I met a lot of Chinese preachers. They have all different kinds of names for the church they created. And there is this Chinese saying, very simple. Everybody understand. When the name is right, your saying can be smooth. But if your name is not correct, whatever you say does not come. <clears throat> There's a Chinese way. The name always comes first. They know Jesus said, I will build my church. And the Bible tells us the church had been built. Jesus had built the church. Why in the world anyone want to have any other church? Especially the name is different. To, my own, to myself, I was in a big surprise. When the lady came to knock on the door, inquired about renting afternoon, Sunday afternoon, to have their church meeting here. For the first time, I told you last Sunday, I put it this way, I said, if you believe Jesus, you can just come join our worship. You can just come worship with us. She was outrageous, very angry. But by the grace of God, she did not cross me. Say those <laughs> crossing words. <laughs> she, she could do that, but she didn't. I was afraid of her, I guess. So she walked away. Jesus already built his church. Why anybody else, anybody else want to build another church? We know that Chinese people come into fashion open up their Chinese restaurant. 
and you see some people say, wow, big business, make lots of money. I was trying to open another one right next to it. What are you trying to do? Complete, you see? Complete with Jesus Christ. Or try to beat him. You make it better. Whatever you say is not right. But they go to church. Jesus did not build. They know, everybody know that verse. Jesus said, I will build my church. And everybody in the world knows the church is already had been built. They know Jesus said, preach the gospel to all creation. But they preach Christianity to all creation. I guess I am the the one preacher pay attention to, to this one. This one come very clear among Chinese speaking people. In Western world, they have no idea or they don't pay attention. But in Chinese, it's very ridiculous and very plain and common. They, Jesus told them to preach the gospel, but they preach Christianity, a religion. Christianity is created in Europe, not in the Bible. And as I say, historical reality, nobody can defend this one. But all this year, I am wondering, only the Chinese knows this thing. Rabbit, no offense. I'm 84. <laughs> Hong Kong educated. Many years ago, actually it's uh, about 100 years now, there's eight nations invaded China, stolen a lot of goods from China, from China, especially in Beijing, you know, who are, the, who were these eight nations? You can go Google search. Eight nations at one time invaded China. Eight nations besides Japan. You know who is Japan, right? Or Japan, or whatever you want to say, okay? All other seven nations were Christianity people. Christianity. Rappers. You see? Christianity people. Rappers. All this year in my lifetime, I always wonder, why did no God believer ever mention Christianity people are rappers, not rubbies, okay? <laughs> Rabbi, you want to be careful, okay? All those seven nations are rappers, stolen goods from China. Christianity is historical facts. As I say, whatever I say, nobody can defend. It's historical fact. Right now, you can go Google search. They have a detailed list. Detailed list. Britain, how many people, what they stolen. America, how many people, what they stolen. Italy, Germany, okay, all those quote-unquote 
Christianity country, to the state. I'm not trying to say good or bad. I'm just mentioning historical fact. <clears throat> By the grace of God, when this preacher grew up, and God has mercy on me for the last 60 years, I will see righteousness or justice practice. Okay? In my lifetime, by the grace of God, as a preacher in the Church of Christ, I was able to help lots of people. You are not going to bully this. Okay? You are not going to bully me. Let me show you my business card. I'm preacher from the Church of Christ. Nobody do that. As I say, if I were there, I will call some of them. We go to China to help them out. Don't steal anything. Not when I'm here. Nobody stolen anything. That's what I would do. A little boy go up on the street, believe Jesus had that little knowledge to do righteousness and see righteousness practice. That's why you call believe Jesus, not religion. If you go Google search, write my Chinese name, Chan Yok Hon Mok Si, lies of my video showed up. The other day, recently, when the Christ of God, we had a lot of visitors. Uh, this morning, we came in two, I, I thought they were, they looked like same, one taller, one shorter. <laughs> I still remember the name. And I tried to show them, they asked a uh, thing about myself. I said, you can go Google search. You can listen to lots of my videos. You know what? Something suddenly happened. His iPhone showed lots of video, you know, the recording video on, on YouTube. But my phone does not work. Hey, most of you believe that it certainly does not work. I said, I was trying to say, let me show you. Then I saw his phone works. Hey, then, uh, David, what happened? His iPhone works, but my iPhone don't work. And I, I'm going to show him. You know what you see? The young man was very good. He said, something he, he, he touched, and it works. <laughs> I didn't even know how to show me how to do it. Okay, next time. <laughs> he said, uh, and it works. Uh, I, I, Peter, I thank you. <laughs> You came here to help with this. Next time, when I turn on the iPhone, I see uh, the first one. Religion, uh, H O A X. Remember, I delivered the sermon. Forgotten, huh? Religion, uh, H O A X. Moses, I got the right word. <laughs> okay, got the right word, right? H O A X. <laughs> Religion, in the history, do all those things. Somehow I just don't like it. I love to see righteousness, justice, practice. It makes me happy. Nobody get bullied. I don't think Ravi, when he size, he will ever bully anybody. They know church name in the Bible is Church of Christ. But they go to church. There's not Church of Christ. Clear. Saul was sincerely wrong. As for zeal, I persecuted the Church of Christ. If Philippians 3.6 when his zeal to devotion to God. 
he wants to see to it. No one can practice, cannot practice, don't, don't practice the law of Moses. He wants to see everybody, his countrymen, all the Jews, all Israelites, practice Ten Commandments. Especially Ten Commandments, number one to number four. Anyone fail to do that, deserve to be killed. That was his devotion. When he was a S-A-U-L. When Stephen was stoned to death, this in <coughs> uh, this is in chapter seven, okay? Chapter eight is a conclusion after that. When Stephen was stoned to death, Saul was there giving approval because Stephen believed Jesus. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. That's the church of Christ, we know that. All except the apostles. The apostles were ready to sacrifice their life to die for the gospel. So they go nowhere. I will preach Jesus is the Christ. If they kill me, so be it. Apostles were not afraid to die the physical death. But other people took Jesus' advice, run to other city. And Jesus promised, <clears throat> you will always have somewhere to run to. By the grace of God, in our, in our recent history, lots of people claim to be persecuted in China. America accept them, welcome them to come to stay. They can run to America or somewhere else. In nowadays, but in that days, they run to everywhere else. Meanwhile, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciple. He wanted, he went to high priest, asked him for a letter to the synagogues in Damascus, giving him the authority if he found any there who belonged to the way, believe Jesus, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoner to Jerusalem. He was devoted. He was dedicated. He was very decisive. She not just do it in Jerusalem. She wants to go to Damascus in Syria. If I find anyone there to believe Jesus, I will arrest them, persecute them, make them denounce or otherwise executed. That was his devotion. And he even goes house to house, drag off men, women, put them in prison. Such highly devoted action, devoted practice. But this is what he said. When he was persecuted, he said this, I was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus Christ. I will do all to destroy them. No one can believe anything else besides practice Ten Commandments by the law of Moses. I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, violent man. Violent man. Very violent. He was decisive, devoted, with a great deal of zeal to persecute, to help the Old Testament be practiced. <coughs> I was shown mercy. 
Remember my subject. Please remember my subject. Plain wrong. Incurable. Be ready to go to hell. Especially, especially some of us have seen <clears throat> some people clearly know what says in the Bible. One time I point out, refuse to obey. Two times I point out to refuse to obey. Three times I point out refuse to obey. Four times still refuse to obey. There is this thing called psychological problem. In psychology, only what kind of people can do a thing like that. In New York City, in America, once upon a time, especially New York City, three strikes, you are out. You remember that time? Three strikes, you are out. They give you only three warnings, three times. But I give them four times. It's plain language, able to practice, but refuse to practice. These people are incurable. There is a psychological problem here. But you need to explain it in the Bible. This is the I think it's uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 somewhere. They have been trapped. Their soul has been caught, trapped in the trap of the devil to do its will. Their soul is under total control of the devil. Because active in ignorance and unbelief, you see, that's the point. He admitted at the time what I did was ignorant. What I did because I did not understand. Sincerely wrong. Curable. Those are sincerely wrong. Devoted wrong. Okay? Devoted wrong. Curable. You see, remember this. Very important. Because I acted in ignorance, unbelief. But this is very clear contrast. In the one hand, this guy is violent, devoted, ready to kill whoever do not follow his way. But he said, I was, do not understand. I was in ignorance and unbelief. I put down here when I try to repeat a uh, very important point. Please pay attention. When you are ignorant and unbelief, you are curable. That's why you need to read the Bible. You need to listen to preaching. You need to attend Bible study. So sooner or later, it will dawn to you. Suddenly, you understand. <clears throat> but you move on to other place. Unchanged. What is the point? You are taking your cancer in your largest colon. Am I get the word right? 
colon, the Lazarus colon. <laughs> There's no nerve. You had last case of cancer. You didn't know. You carry it from one place to another place. You still have that cancer. What's the point? You have to get here. Go to Peter, okay? Find out and cut it out. Then you can save your life. You leave your cancer and carry it alone. What's the point? Because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Devoted people can be wrong. Okay? Can be ignorant. Especially, listen very carefully, next to my house where I live, there are this small Korean church. They practice 5 o'clock in the morning, not even, okay? 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Somehow, hey, Peter, they are very sharp on the timing, you know that? Sharply 5 o'clock, they all arrive. Sharply 6 o'clock, they all departed. <laughs> One hour, Monday to Friday, they pray. One hour, Friday to Saturday, uh, Friday. Monday to Friday, they pray, pray, pray practice. But <clears throat> when I get up early enough, cool. The last guy, you know. When I get early in the call the last guy, I said, Are you interested to find out some misunderstand, mistranslation in your Bible? Hey, Moses, not interested. Hey, Peter, not interested. They get up and pray. Five to six o'clock, but Bible too, they're not interested. I didn't just try to one, okay? I tried a few, I'm not one interested. And even the preacher, the big preacher, okay, the one who in charge, when he was in very happy, he told me, I'm an expert, I just preached. <laughs> <laughs> I said, preaching early survey and then come back. <laughs> he was still <laughs> breathing. I said, uh, do you use NIV Bible? He said, yes. I said, do you know NIV Bible changed the word in Proverbs 2, 7. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7. Change the word. He said, no, I don't know. I did not follow, okay? <clears throat> then, because he said he's a Bible expert, I tried to share with him. And then he, uh, and a few weeks later, I saw him again. I said, did you check out NIV Bible, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7? It was wrong. He said, hey, Peter, what happened? They're not interested. They are interested. Every morning, you know, Monday to Friday, pray for one of Gordon. What happened? They are not interested in the Bible. It said, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. I'm blessed. I was devoted in a wrong way. I was devoted in ignorance and God's mercy, abundant love for me. For those who fail to be devoted in the right way, God's mercy always waiting for you. But if you are plain wrong, and insist, refuse to change. No mercy from God for these people. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
of whom I was the worst. These Jews were plain wrong. Now we come to some Jews plain wrong. Jesus, as Jesus went along, he saw a man born blind. His disciple asked, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? I don't know why they have this kind of idea at that time. If a child born blind, it's because somebody committed sin. That was recorded in the Bible. I don't know, understand, okay? But it's recorded. Born blind. His commission or his parent. Jesus said, neither this man nor his parent. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Every time when I read this story, I would thank you, Lord. I'm not the one who chose to do this. Hey, David, I would not like this kind of work. Because he was born blind to show, to let people know that Jesus is the Christ. That was why he was born blind. Understand? At that time, no one can open up the eyes who was born blind and to see. Only God can do it. And this man, his job in the work of God is to be blind at birth. So if Jesus come along, open his eyes. The way Jesus did it, no doctor will ever do. He used saliva. <laughs> Mixed with mud. And then put on the eyes. I, 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 hope, I hope he was closing his eyes, okay? And then wipe away. And you go wash your eyes. The eye open. Who can do it? Not human. Only God can do it. And Jesus could do it. See? Only God can do it. Jesus could do it. Jesus is God. That's how it works. <clears throat> Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Uh, pay attention. You always have someone have some, some kind of idea against it. So you people against what you are following Jesus Christ, don't worry about it. Even you are as perfect as Jesus Christ, as Apostle Paul. People can still pick something on you. And this one is classic. Jesus is not from God because he did this thing on in the in Sabbath day. Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do this thing. Okay? That's another subject. But that's their, their reason. They, they, they use not keep the Sabbath as an excuse to deny the work of God. Whatever you do, right or wrong, interfere or deny the work of God is not right. <clears throat> but others ask, how can a sinner do such miracle, miraculous sign? So they were divided. Then they hold insult at the man and said, you are his, this Pharaoh's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. Actually, they were dis a disgrace of Moses. Okay? Later, Apostle Paul know that. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Uh, listen to it very careful. We know that God does not listen to sinners. Be well. Acts chapter 10. God listened to sinners. Do you know that? <clears throat> Cornelius was a sinner. He prayed, he worshiped God. God listened. 
So you want to be very careful. He, he is talking about, here he is talking about open the eyes, the eye. His eye, when he was born, he, his eye was fine. Okay? And Jesus asked God, you see, you ask God to open his eyes. You have, you can open his eyes. You have to be God. Because human cannot do. But it may clear. It's not like praying to save your soul. It's in this miracle work. <clears throat> Nobody has ever heard of opening the eye of a man born blind. You see, no man can do this thing. If man were not from God, he cannot do this thing. Only man from God who can do and Jesus could do. Therefore, Jesus is from God. To this they reply, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they throw him out of the synagogue. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. He later he found him and he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man asked, Who is who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. This time Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. It's clear enough now, right? This man was born blind, but he was not crazy. <laughs> he understand this. Do you believe? You see, start over. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, do you believe in the Son of Man? You know, in the Old Testament, you know the Son of Man means, okay? The one God sent to save the Israel. The man asked, who is he? Sir, tell me so that I can believe in him. This is how he said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is talking, he's speaking to you. This is I saw that I thought of many years. We have been here for 40 some years. And lots of time, hey David, when I come in, lots of time, I clean up the outside garbage. Small garbage, big garbage. I swim whenever I come. I always sweep, make it clean outside. Go down. When you come early, we, we will help, right? Yeah. And some people walk by interested in this building. They, they very often at that time they ask me, Can I talk to the owner of this place? So I said, The owner? The owner is Jesus Christ. <laughs> said, I said, he said, who is the one in charge? I said, what do you want? He said, I want to talk to him. I said, if you have something, you can just tell me, talk to me. He said, who are you? You walk away. Lots of times, hey, Peter, they walk away from me. You want to see who is in charge in here. But this one, this guy is very, very smart. I got the same case, right? This is a mark. He said, who is he? The one talking to you. Oh, he, he understand, okay? Very good. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him right there. He may be blind, but he's smart. Like God, he's smart. He understand. But he said, "Who is she? The one is talking to you. He was watching at him." Okay, this Jew will play wrong. Some man came, bringing to him a paralytic. Okay, carried by them, so they could not get to him because the crowd. They make an opening in the roof about Jesus and after they get it through, they lower down the mat with the man and lying on. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said what? To the paralytic, he said, Son, your sin forgiven. They don't like it. Now some teacher of the law said, uh, sitting there, thinking to themselves, why does this fellow look like that? Hey, son, you are sin forgiven. And he blasphemed me. Who can forgive sin but God alone? They were very careful. They said, they said it, the keys, they said it. Only God can forgive sin. This is it, okay? They said it. Immediately, Jesus knew what happened, what were they thinking? And in their heart, and he said to them, Why are you thinking this thing? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your, your sin is forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat and go home? Which is easy? And he said, But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. See, you said it. Only God can forgive sin. And now I show you, I can forgive sin. Any normal humans to understand, right? They said it. Hey, Moses, this is the key. By the grace of God, this guy adopt this. I make those denomination people say the thing. Okay, you said it now, okay? Remember you said it. Write it down. And then, next line. Okay? <clears throat> he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up! Take your mat, go home. What happened? This is to be very carefully, very important. Nowadays, we still have some uh, cheaters, okay, liars. They said, we go to have a meeting, special meeting, miracle sign. You bring all your sick people, I say a prayer, and they will get up and walk. They did it, and they do it. But you know what happened? We're not like this one. They have some guy sitting on a wheelchair and puts him in onto the pulpit. And the guy, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. They have two big guys right beside him, lift him up slowly and carry him, half carry him. Walk slowly. Hey! Miracle! And then I saw some <clears throat> news reporter. They keep their camera recording. When they go down, the guy sitting back there. It's a fake. Okay, it's not like that. But this guy, whatever, he got up, took his mat. Walk up in full view. Miracular sign this way. Hey, only God can forgive sin. Only God can do a thing like this. Now, Jesus said, let me show you. I can do both. They said, only God can do. Now, Jesus could do both. What should they say? They should like the bone plant. Nail down and worship. That's it. He is God right there. This amazes everyone and praise God. Say, we have never seen anything like this. Conclusion now. Only God can do. And Jesus could do. Therefore, Jesus is God. And finally, Jesus had to plainly tell them, when you see me, you see God. And at John chapter 10, verse 30, 
My Father and I are one. God is in me and I'm in God. Very clear. But at the time, Jesus had to pay for this decoration with the light of his physical body. They nailed him to the cross. And you see, we all see what happened. Fifteen, uh, two thousand years later, how many people go to the Church of Christ in Jerusalem? The last time I checked, only a few people. They had seated and recorded. And they chose not to believe. Plain wrong, incurable. And they had 2,000 years, still incurable. <clears throat> May the Lord bless each one of us. Our David, come to say, Coach, prayer.